So some of the parts you are already uh, aware with, like uh, transistor. So I will just brief about the uh, BJT. Okay, and then in the next lecture we'll see uh, the other kind, other bipolar transistors and unipolar transistors. But today we will just have the idea about uh, all. You can say there's the revision of the transistor part and how we can use two terminal devices as what active devices like diode. So far we have uh, learned that the diode is used as a rectifier, but it's not. Uh, uh, necessary that the diode will be always used as a rectifier. There are other applications of the diode also, like it can be used as an amplifier or oscillator. Okay, so what feature uh, is required for any diode to work as a as a uh, oscillator or amplifier that we are going to see today. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the transistor because it's not, it's not going to take much time. Okay, your already aware with the ordinary transistor and we will see what is the difference between the low frequency transistor and the high frequency transistor. So it's a BJT which we are going to discuss. Now BJT you are aware that it comprises of three different layers. Okay, So emitter is there, then base is there and the collector is there. Okay, So emitter it is very heavily doped because it works like a source for the carriers, okay? Then base, because the role of the base is to, is to what? Uh, act like a uh, switching point, okay? So the width of the base is kept as narrow as possible. Then next is the collector, whatever uh, carriers are provided from the emitter portion that is always collected by the collector. So the area of the collector is very large. And of course it is uh, lightly doped with respect to what base. And the base is what light, uh, lightly doped with respect to what emitter. So emitter is what heavily doped. Then the concentration is a little lesser in case of base and least in case of collector. Now uh, you have already learned that this emitter, base and collector. So three terminals are there now based on the kind of configuration we are having different characteristic of the BJT. So BJT it can be what and uh, uh, NPN okay so it's like this and this is NPN okay so and P N so this is collector this is base this is emitter and if it is PNP, then the direction of the arrow that is going to change. That is the only difference. Otherwise, the working is going to be same. But remember that when, when you're going to uh, talk about what? Uh, RF transistor, then it has to be NPN, okay? NPN is preferred. Any reason? Anyone remembers why NPN can be preferred? Over PNP. No answer. Okay, it's simply because uh, in in case of NPN, the carriers are electron. Okay, it's a bipolar transistor, so hole and electron both are there. But uh, here, if you look at NPN. Uh, so it means that the emitter, it comprises of what n type of semiconductor. Okay. Sir, so the major role play. Uh, yeah? B uh, forty three solar got disconnected. Is that a? Uh, I can't do anything uh, because uh, I am uh, sharing screen. So okay, uh, Dongre sir, please admit that student. Yes, sir. All the students are admitted. So NPN because uh, see we want uh, um, when we deal with the RF signal. So the issue with the RF signal is what its time period is very small. Okay, if this is the one cycle, suppose. Okay, so what should be the uh, what is the requirement that before this uh, this there is change in the input voltage? Suppose if I use a BJT as an amplifier, okay? 
so let us consider that uh, source is applied here okay and uh, with the help of that source i'm trying to find out what's some output voltage okay and it is biased so the requirement is what before this there is what uh, a drastic change in the input signal the instantaneous voltage which is available across base to emitter that should get reflected on the other side so uh, in order to have this characteristic the <clears throat> mobility of the particle those particles which are actually contributing in the flow of current in the entire circuitry that mobility should be very high so electron is what having a uh, higher mobility as compared to what the holes like if you uh, look at <clears throat> the silicon then the hole mobility is 450 whereas electron mobility is 1600 so it is four times more that's why Shastri sir, your screen is not visible and you are also not audible. So, uh, the modes which we are uh, using for the transistor. So different modes we have already seen in the earlier semesters, like uh, first one is what? Common emitter. This is one of the modes in which the transistor is operated. Common emitter. The advantage of the common emitter is what? If suppose you are going to use common emitter mode, of the transistor for amplification purpose, then Z in is very large, okay? And the output impedance, that is Z out, that also is very large. But of course, whether you want a higher input impedance or higher output impedance, that totally depends on the kind of application. So here the common emitter mode, the advantage is what? You will have power, ampli the uh, uh, current amplification as well as, as what? Uh, voltage amplification it means that there is a good amplification of what power but of course it is not uh, very high that's why we go for what different uh, uh, modes of operation under common emitter only like uh, uh, this uh, mode a is there then uh, b is there a b is there c is there these are the different configurations under c mode only so uh, c category of the amplifier has got the largest efficiency but of course uh, CE, that is common emitter, that is one of the uh, this uh, modes of operation. So the uh, drawback of this is what? Z out is very large. That is only uh, drawback here. So what uh, uh, is the solution for this? Common collector. So there, when we talk about the common collector, so output is taken across the emitter terminal. Okay, now the advantage of this is what? Z in is very, very large and Z out is very small. So this is much better, but the problem is what? Amplification, current um, uh, here, uh, the voltage amplification is not significant. It is uh, almost one or less than one actually. And so that's why, because you are collecting your output across what emitter terminal. So it is also called as what emitter follower. But of course the current amplification is very large, so, but the voltage amplification is almost one. So you can see that here, there is uh, not a significant change in the amount of power, but the advantage is what since the input impedance is very large, you can club this common emitter with common collector to have a overall power amplification. And if suppose you are going to design, Uh, some background noise is coming. Okay. So another is what? Common base. If you are going to use your transistor as what? Uh, current source. So in that case, this uh, common base uh, can be used. Okay. And the property of the common base is what? 
that input impedance is very low and uh, output impedance is very large. So here, Z out, I will write here, uh, Z out as very large and Z in very small. Since the Z out is very, very large, then this kind of source uh, is, can be used as what current source. So means if you are using a common uh, base configuration of the transistor, then the transistor can be used as a as a source of current. Okay. So these are the various modes which I've already learned. Now, uh, then how the RF transistors are different than this ordinary transistor. So already I have said that you have to have a transistor which is what uh, fast in action. Its action should be very very faster as compared to the rate at which the applied signal is changing. So for that I said that yeah we are dependent more on what NPN transistor than PNP because of the high mobility of the electrons. But is it so that only mobility is going to play important role in the RF transistor? Because once the uh, material is chosen, it means that the mobility of that particular, uh, the electrons for that particular material is going to remain constant. But if suppose you want to operate your transistor at a very high frequency, so is it uh, that the whatever mobility is available uh, with that electron that will be sufficient to operate the same transistor at uh, like RF frequency or micro frequency. So it's not like that actually. So one parameter is what mobility that that is the requirement the electrons or whichever car carrier is there it should have very high mobility but at the same time the device size should be as small as possible. So that's why when we talk about the high frequency transistor so it is uh, the process technology which matters more other than mobility of the electron like when we talk about the transistor so the issue is what the length okay so if suppose this is the base region okay this is emitter region and this is collector region so as i said that the emitter it behaves what as a source of current so the electron it has to pass this emitter region then base region and finally it must cross this entire collector region and, and it must enter into the outer circuitry okay like uh, load is there suppose so if that electron is what uh, received by this load then only you can say that something has happened in the actual world otherwise nothing uh, is happening okay so the electron it has to actually travel this entire length right so while traveling one more now while traveling what uh, this electron is going to face that the first depletion region that is what between base and emitter then the second depletion region that is what base and collector so this depletion region it forms what c okay capacitance so capacitance capacitance has got developed now every uh, bulk region so it means that emitter region base region and collector region actually it, it is what extrinsic in nature so extrinsic in nature means what it is modified form of the intrinsic semiconductor material where we have doped this emitter and collector region so that uh, we are having what n kind of material now when we are saying that it is doped it means that we have actually modified uh, insulating material or a low conducting material into what high conductivity material so we have increased the conductivity so it doesn't mean that the conductivity has gone to what infinite it means that every layer is going to have some resistance also okay so there will be resistance in the uh, e layer then b layer then c layer so now you can see that it's uh, so every layer it becomes what combination of c and r okay so it will be something like this Okay, now if you want to have some output across this resistor uh, on the application of some source, right? So you know that because of this capacitor and resistor. So first, in order to actually transfer this effect, which is present on the input side, on the output side, the capacitor must get charged. So the charging, it totally depends on time factor time constant you can say that is nothing but the product of r and c okay 
so if c is there r is there so definitely the signal uh, it will uh, this this entire circuitry it will take certain time to reflect the input on the output side so that time constant it totally depends on r and c so similarly in transistor also there is what rc effect so this is the reason why even if the mobility is good but because of this capacitance developed the speed is there is a limited speed okay so that's why there is always some upper limit uh, in case of frequency so even if the mobility is good it doesn't mean that your device is going to behave uh, going to work well at rf frequency or micro frequency what you have to do you have to take care of c okay capacitance now this is one parameter second so if suppose you have uh, reduced the value of c then r is also less okay so time constant becomes what very small so frequency can be very large right but uh, what else can be done so as i said that the, it is a time taken by the electron to travel this entire length of this what is device that also matter so if you could reduce the time taken by the electron to travel this entire length then that can be the another advantage means the frequency can be further increased so now the reducing the size of the transistor that totally depends on that whether we have that kind of technology or not that's why i said that it is a processing technology which matters more because the concept which we are having at low frequency of the low frequency transistor same concept is applicable at higher frequency also but the problem is that whether we are able to control the c whether we are able to uh, reduce the size of uh, the sample or not so if we can do all this then we can have a high frequency transistor and this is what uh, this uh, different processing technologies they are doing now uh, is it possible that we can just go on shrinking the size of the sample so of course if the technology improves then that is possible but uh, is it good to do that so that you, you must be uh, knowing that electric field intensity that is what v by d let us consider that d is what the length of the the sample yeah emitter base and collector sample that is what transistor it is d okay so even if suppose even if suppose the voltage is lesser okay yeah. you have you are operating your hello okay so even if the applied voltage is small means you are operating your uh, transistor at lower voltage but if suppose the sample length of the transistor is very very small so what is going to happen that this ratio will, it will increase and if suppose the ratio uh, it attains a value which is what equals to what the breakdown voltage of that particular material like suppose you are using silicon so it will have some breakdown potential so if this electric potential reaches to that value then the breakdown of the device is going to take place so you cannot uh, go on reducing the size of the uh, sample so if you are reducing that then the vol uh, the voltage at which these devices can be operated that also will be reduced means you have to sacrifice the power and handling capacity also okay so otherwise what you have learned in the edc1 about the transistor same is applicable at higher frequency also but of course what uh, uh, was introduced in the second year that was at shallow level there are many more things like uh, early voltage so early voltage uh, it was simply uh, the maximum possible uh, allowed voltage okay before your transistor breaks so that was derived using this uh this projection okay so if all this uh, if you take any any point on this uh this suppose you are having a load line okay so you just project all this uh tangent so on the back side so you will find that the all the uh, the lines that are going to meet at uh, one particular uh -huh. point and that point is nothing but early voltage so but if you look at the actual behavior so this graph is not smooth actually so these parts were not taken Uh, into the consideration in edc1 otherwise every whatever theory you have learned from the lower uh, semester same theory is applicable only you have to keep in mind that the speed of the device 
or the upper limit of the frequency it depends on the mobility that is one parameter second the junction capacitance okay these are the hurdles uh, sorry the junction capacitance that is what the hurdle so in order to avoid that hurdle of course you have to have a technology which can reduce the uh, capacitance okay so uh, that is one uh, thing and uh, second is what you can reduce the size of the sample but at the cost of what power handling capacity of the transistor so if you are uh, able to minimize capacitance minimize the uh, length of the sample of the bjt then the high frequency can be attained okay but this if you remember that this capacitance kind of issue is not there in the fet okay that's why fet can be operated at a higher frequency but the problem is what length of the entire fet channel is larger than this uh, transistor bjt uh, sample so of course finally if the technology is uh, has grown enough to reduce the size of the sample then fet can be operated at very high frequency as compared to the bjt because capacitance junction capacitances are not there through which your carrier passes like here electronic has to pass through these two capacitors okay so speed of the bjt uh, is smaller okay but the length of the sample in case of bjt it, it is very small as compared to what fet now uh, uh, we are knowing that we are using this transistor as what amplifier or oscillator but uh, the new thing which we are going to say is what the use of diode as an oscillator or amplifier how diode or transistor can be used as an amplifier okay so for that we can start with what tunnel diode tunnel diode so tunnel diode is uh, uh, like your ordinary pn junction diode you only but with improved or uh, increased uh, doping concentration okay doping concentration is increased here now uh, why to increase is the doping concentration is it so that we are going to make a zener diode no it's not like that actually we are in, uh, there is uh, see when before the existence of this uh, tunnel diode the people those who are working in in this area they were already aware that uh, there is something called as what tunneling effect that may exist means uh, in a transistor so first we'll uh, just go through the ordinary diode huh? because uh, our here our intention is what just to compare and get get the idea how this tunnel diode is different than the ordinary pn junction diode so if this is the p type of extrinsic material this is n type of extrinsic material so if they are clubbed so we know that this is the junction and this junction because when this p and n material meets at this junction then depletion region gets created depletion region where there is no free particle at 0 degree temperature but immobile ions are there and because of this immobile ions the potential barrier gets formed okay so there is something like this so if the uh, hole it has to uh, go on to the other side so it has to overcome this barrier and similarly if the electron has to go on the other side then it has to overcome this barrier potential okay without overcoming this barrier potential the holes and electrons they cannot cross this junction that's why we what we do that we are providing external potential so that the electrons and hole they are going to gain energy which is what sufficient to overcome this barrier potential this is what we have learned but uh, there was one person uh, whose name was what esaki okay this was the person who invented this tunnel diode he proposed a theory because i see already uh, the concept of a little idea that people were having that uh, if the doping concentration if it is increased then some irregular behavior can be seen in the pn junction diode but nobody was able to describe why th that uh, that is happening so esaki was the first person to tell what happens if the doping concentration is increased so first thing is 
if the doping concentration is increased okay so first is what uh, this width depletion width that reduces that is first thing okay reduction in the depletion width this was the first thing second the uh, energy level of the electrons and holes in the p type of uh, region and n type of region that is going to be very high okay and he also proposed that uh, that is totally based on the quantum theory that even if there is a potential barrier okay at the n junction but if there is what uh, equal number of empty space uh, not space states empty states empty states means what the holes because hole means what it has the tendency what to uh, attract the electron you can say or the electron it can it can fall into a hole and that hole will get shifted to some other place right so that's why we say that the holes are means what there is what uh, in p region if the holes are there means what there is a multiple vacancies which can help the electron to move from one place to the other place okay so these are called as what empty space space states and if suppose there are number of equal number of electrons on the other side okay so you can now you can see that uh, what i'm trying to say that here in this p region there is what empty space uh, states are there okay and i have written equal number of empty space states so equal number of empty uh, states means what here the amount of electrons which are available here those electrons and the here empty states space, uh, states if they are equal in number and this uh, uh, the depletion width if it is very small small means somewhere around 3 angstroms then there is possibility that the electron it can cross its junction and hole also it can cross junction without overcoming this barrier means it appears that the electron and holes they are passing through the potential or it's a, it's like their tunnel has got created through which these electrons and holes they are crossing this junction but the condition is what this criteria should be what satisfied that the depletion width is very narrow and there is what equal uh, number of empty space uh, states and the electrons are available then only this is possible otherwise it is not possible now so uh, how this behavior was described by this uh, sir ha huh. uh, sir i have doubt can you uh, please share once again the previous slide uh, huh. sir uh, in this tunnel diode you said that uh, if number of electrons and holes are equal and depletion region is so small then electrons huh. may jump into these holes right ha huh. uh, sir it is possible without biasing right uh, no no means uh, uh, biasing see when i say uh, you are applying biasing so biasing is what basically uh, to overcome the barrier potential okay right. so suppose i say that this potential this barrier is, is suppose of 1 volt okay so if you provide mm -hmm. externally 1 volt then only the electron and hole can cross the junction or larger mm -hmm. than 1 volt but here even if suppose you are applying a, a 0.1 volt then also the electron and hole they can cross the junction okay so that is what i was trying to say that they need not overcome this uh, barrier potential mm hmm even if the external push which is what less than 1 volt less than 1 volt means what less than the barrier potential even if mm. the applied potential is lesser than the barrier potential then also the electrons and hole will get pushed and they can cross the junction very easily okay and uh, see what i am providing here is very very shallow information because actually if you have to get the better idea then quantum physics is the only solution but we are restricted Uh, uh, the engineers they hardly go to the what quantum physics. Otherwise, uh, if you want, 
if you really enjoy this topic then the quantum physics there is on because earlier also i said that the people were they were knowing that some irregular behavior is seen if the doping concentration is increased but nobody was able to describe then finally esaki he took the help of quantum physics and he was able to describe what is happening actually so it is a quantum behavior okay sir ha huh. okay so uh, now in order to get uh, the idea why it is happening actually so this uh, uh, energy distribution uh, of the n type of layer and p type of layer that was proposed so i will draw that that those diagrams here okay so here this is p region and this is what n region so p region means holes are there okay so here this is valence energy level this is conduction energy level so you can see that there is no uh, this uh, uh, hole cannot exist in the conduction band because that is what dedicated for the free electrons okay holes they are restricted to what to the outermost shells only okay they cannot leave that outermost shell so here this is a, a distance and uh, the y axis is what the distribution of the energy so here this is empty space uh, states mm. empty states so here uh, p region is there so because it is p region so the holes are available here but in the conduction sorry in the valence band okay on the other side in n region in n region there are filled electrons okay so here filled states are there okay so these are what filled states and this is what ec conduction and the valence band it goes somewhere here so all the electrons they are in the conduction band okay here but their energy level as you can see it is what uh, smaller as compared to so you can see that the energy level of the electrons which are representing field states that is lesser than the energy state of the elect, uh, the holes which are available on the uh, in the p region so es means the empty space okay states sorry not space okay so because of the uh, difference in the energy level the electron cannot occupy that state because in order to occupy the this vacancy state the electrons must have equal amount of energy then only it will occupy that state okay so this is what before biasing now if suppose you are uh, applying a forward bias potential then what happens that this energy level this filled state its energy level is going to increase so what is going to happen because of that so once again i will draw this diagram here so this energy level of the uh, empty st states it will remain as it is okay here but the energy level of the electron it will increase acha why the energy level of the electron will, will increase why not the holes because uh, uh, you have already gone through this this particular not particular to this topic but similar kind of this uh, this uh, theory you have already seen in your lower semester why the energy level of the hole is not going to change why the energy level of the electron only is going to change see if the energy level of the hole is going to change yeah, increase it means that it has to finally go into what conduction band and if the final energy level is further increased then the uh, that hole it must leave that material and it must be able to freely move outside that material okay but hole is what actually vacancy 
vacancy it is always available in the valence band only okay that, that's why the energy level of the hole is not going to increase but the electron can because electron is a particle which can leave the material if the sufficient amount of energy is supplied then the electron can leave okay for example uh, uh, your uh, tubes you know you have gone through what reflex klystron tube and multi cavity klystron uh, taught by dongre sir so they are because of the thermionic emission the electrons they are leaving the metallic surface and they are uh, free to move in in the air medium or the vacuum sorry not the air medium vacuum under the influence of electric field applied okay so electron is a particle which can be in the in any of the shell as well as it can leave the shell and it come it can come out so same thing cannot happen with the p type uh, sorry the holes that's why when i say the biasing is applied so you can see that now uh, just have a look at this this part huh? i'm just have a look at this so earlier this is the what the empty space states okay means there is what uh, uh, the vacancy for the electrons to come and occupy that region so in the first diagram i said that the field states which is what represented by this electron present in what n region so the energy level of the electron is what lesser but if externally apply now you can see that the energy level of the electron and this empty space has become what equal or a, a little alignment uh, has been achieved so you can see that now since the energy level of some of the electron and some of the empty space that has become equal so electron it can start tunneling from n region to p region okay and if i suppose draw this uh, vi characteristic so uh, this is voltage and current so if uh, if there is increase in the voltage then there will be what increase in the current and uh, you can attain a maximum uh, value of the current there is nothing but the peak value of the current and after that the current reduces reduces and finally it will drop to a minimum value then once again it rises like this like this so this region okay so this uh, i will just draw one dotted curve see this black uh, curve it is nothing but the ordinary uh, behavior of the ordinary pn junction transistor but in the red region there is the there is something new okay that is because of the tunneling effect now we will see why why this is happening and we'll finally conclude uh, how this device can be used as an amplifier or oscillator okay now if suppose the externally applied voltage uh, it has reached to this point okay here so i said that the current is maximum in that case so the simple reason for that is what uh, i will just redraw this portion here now it is happening because whatever electrons which are available in the n region majority of the electrons energy level is what equals to the energy level of the empty space okay so here now you can see that this energy level and this energy level of the empty space they are equal you can see that they are they are they have got aligned that's why the majority of the electrons will start tunneling from one side to the other side and similarly the holes also will move from one side to the other side okay and you get a peak current right but if suppose uh, the energy uh, now suppose the applied voltage it has got further increase then what is going to happen so once again since then uh, externally you are supplying more energy then the electron which are present in the end region their energy level is going to increase further so what is going to happen now the energy level it has got shifted to somewhere like this so you can see that this energy level it keeps increasing now there are very less amount of electrons which are whose energy level is what equals to what the energy level of this empty space okay here this portion so very few electron they are going to move on the other side that's why there is what continuous decrease decrease in what uh, the electron so finally if there is totally miss total misalignment is uh, going to take place suppose okay it means something like this now you can see that the energy level of the electron and the empty space level there is not matched okay so actually the tunneling effect is now gone for the tunneling effect in the beginning i said that the depletion region that width should be very small that can be achieved with the by what high doping concentration that is one thing second the energy state of the electron and the empty states should be what equal 
then there will be what tunneling effect. Now the energy uh, level of the electron and the empty space, the, they are they are completely misaligned. So now the uh, the tunneling effect is now it is gone. But if you keep increasing the externally applied voltage, then there will be what once again there will be rise in the current. Then why is happening now? Now the your old concept of what uh, you overcome the barrier potential, then the electron and hole they can cross the junction. That is going to happen. Now the applied potential it has become sufficiently large so that whatever electrons are present in N region and the holes present in the P region, they have got gained sufficient energy to overcome the barrier potential and the current will increase as you increase the barrier potential. And you can see that now the behavior is like ordinary transistor, uh, sorry, ordinary diode. Okay, so we are uh, not much interested in this region of the diode. We are more interested in this region and that too from this peak value to what the lowest uh, current means in this behavior here to here. Now why uh, we are more interested in this behavior? Of course, this, this was the newly uh, attained behavior from the diode, but of course, uh, this behavior was used by the engineer for making transistor and a transistor for accelerator amplifier. Now we will see why, uh, how this behavior is um, so useful and the modern technology has got changed. Uh, resistance, okay. Resistance is given by what? Uh, dV by dI. If our time varying voltage and current is there. Okay, so I said that the behavior voltage and current behavior is what something like this right so we are interested in this region when the current is at peak when the current is lower or minimum but not zero okay so this uh, falling slope so falling slope means what uh, it's negative right or you can apply uh, dv by di or you take any two point on this uh, graph okay so this is uh, this point you take and this point you take so here the voltage is high here the voltage is lesser okay so difference is going to be what positive but here the voltage uh, current is what lower and here the current is higher so difference is going to be negative okay so dv by di is going to give you what minus negative resistance right now this negative resistance is actually used for amplification purpose or for oscillation purpose so that you can uh, see in your uh, next semester how this negative resistance can be used as, as uh, for making what oscillator or amplifier. But here we will, uh, of course, I have to share you uh, the application of this negative resistance because there is one more diode, gun diode, which is uh, uh, going to be used as oscillator or amplifier just because it is having this negative resistance characteristic. So for that, I will take a simple formula Reflection coefficient, anyone remembers the formula of the reflection coefficient uh, because of the two impedances, mismatch in the two impedances? Anyone? Hello. Uh, sir, maybe Z, Z1 minus Z2 upon Z1 plus Z2. Okay. Something like this, right? ZL minus Z0. If I consider that ZL is the load connected to a transmission line whose characteristic impedance is Z0. Okay. So formula is something like this. Now, let us consider that we are dealing with what? A uh, real load whose nature is what? Negative. So it becomes what? RL. Z0 is always a positive, uh, real quantity. Okay. Now, can you guess uh, this magnitude of the reflection coefficient will be larger than one or lesser than one? You can assume any value for RL other than zero. Reflection coefficient, magnitude uh, of the reflection than, coefficient. 
So greater, greater than, than one. one. Greater than one, of course. It is going to be greater than one. Okay. And phase. Uh, now, if I suppose talk about the phase, what can be the phase? One eighty degree. Because the numerator will be both are negative, so answer will be negative. But denominator, okay, that depends uh, on the magnitude of the RL. If the RL is smaller than the ZL, then it will it is going to be positive. Okay, okay, so it can be either zero or one eighty degree. But of course, the reflection coefficient is larger than one. Now, uh, can you interpret the meaning of the uh, reflection coefficient larger than one? Because our, our application is totally dependent on this. A reflection coefficient only. If the reflection coefficient is larger than one, it means that if suppose you are sending one volt, okay, and the magnitude of the reflection coefficient is two, so the reflected amount of voltage will be twice of the incident quantity. So if you are sending one volt, you will get Two volt in return. If you are sending five volt in return, you are going to get ten volt. So don't you think that uh, the magnification is taking place? So gain yes, of sir. the amplifier is totally dependent on the magnitude of this reflection coefficient. Okay. So uh, now the remaining part we'll see in the next lecture huh? means uh, where how to use this as an uh, oscillator or amplifier. Okay. Uh, now 9.55, sorry, 10.55. So we'll be having test. So take a break. And once again, we can resume for the test. So the instruction for the test is what? All of you, uh, we will take a break of 10 minutes. So we will come back at 11 o'clock. And 11 o'clock, we will give the instruction. The test is on the... Uh, Google Classroom. Test is for 20 question, 20 mark, and the duration will be 25 minutes. 20 question, 20 mark, multiple choice question. Duration will be 25 minutes. So we will uh, start it uh, after all of you will join. So all of you join at uh, 11 o'clock. Okay. So join means. Uh, you will remain at join, but uh, at 11 o'clock, uh, all of you uh, will switch on your video. Okay, then we'll start the test. Okay. If is there any question, then you can ask now or at 11 o'clock also. Okay, so we will uh, join at 11 o'clock and we will start the procedure for the test. Thank you.